Hello everyone, Parashat Naso, this Shabbat, the Shabbat after the holiday of Shavuot. And of course, this parasha has a lot uh, of important uh, small parashiot inside. Uh, if it's the parashat of Sota, if it's um, if we talk about the Nazir. So this parasha has 176 verses and it's the longest of the parashiot, yet one of the most moving passages and the one that has the greatest impact uh, over the course of history. It's very short indeed and it's known by almost every Jew, namely the priestly blessings. The Lord says to, said to Moshe, Tell Aaron and his sons, you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let them set my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Numbers 6, 23, 27. This is among the oldest of all prayer texts. It was used by the priest in the temple. It is said today by the Kohanim in the readest repetition of the Amidah in Israel every day, in most of the diaspora, only on festivals. It is used by parents as they bless their children on Friday night. It is often said to the bride and groom and the chupa. It is the simplest and most beautiful of all blessings. It also appears in the oldest of all biblical texts that have physically survived till today. What gives the priestly blessing the power is their simplicity and beauty. They have a strong rhythmic structure. The lines contain three, five, and seven words respectively. In each, the second word is the Lord. In all three verses, the first part refers to an activity on the part of God. Bless, make his face shine, and turn his face toward. The second part describes the effect of the blessing on us, giving us protection, grace, and peace. They also travel inward as it were. The first verse, may the Lord bless you and protect you, refer as the commenter note to material blessings, sustenance, physical health, and so on. The second, may the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you, refers to moral blessing. Chen, grace, is what we show to other people and they to us. It is interpersonal. Here we are asking God to give some of his grace to us and others so that we can live together without the strife and envy that can so easily poison, poison relationship. That is lovely what we mean when we say, may the Lord turn his face toward you. There are over 7 billion people now living on this earth. What makes any of us more than a face in the crowd, a wave in the ocean, a grain of sand in the seashore? The fact that God that we are all God's children. He is our parent. He turns his face toward us. He cares. The God of Abraham is not a mere force of nature or even all the forces of nature combined. A tsunami does not pause to ask who his victim will be. There is nothing personal about an earthquake or a tornado. The word Elohim means something like the force of forces, cause of causes, the totally of all scientifically discoverable laws. It refers to those aspects of God that are impersonal. It also refers to God in his attribute of justice, since justice is essentially impersonal. But the name we call Hashem, the name used in the priestly blessings, and in almost all the priestly texts, is God as he relates to us as individual, each with our unique configuration of hopes and fears, gift and possibilities. Hashem is the aspect of God that allows us to use the word you. He is the God who speaks to us and who listen when we speak to him. How this happens, we do not know, but that is happened to, ch to central to Jewish faith. That we call God Hashem is the transcendental, a confirmation of significance in the scheme of things. We matter as individual because God cares for us as a parent for a child. That incidentally is one reason why the priestly blessings are all in the singular, to emphasize that God blesses us not only collectively, but also individually. One life, said the sages, is like a universe. Has the meaning of the last of the priestly blessings, the knowledge that God turns his face toward us, that we are not just an indiscernible face in the crowd, but that God relates to us in our uniqueness and singularity. 
is the most profound and ultimate source of peace. Competition, strife, loneliness, and violence comes from the physio physiological need to prove that we matter. We do things to prove that I am more powerful or richer or more successful than you. I can make you fear. I can bend you to my will. I can turn you into my victim, my subject, my slave. All of these things testify not to faith, but to a profound failure of faith. Faith means that I believe that God cares about me. I am here because he wanted me to be here. The soul he gave me is pure. Even true, I am like a child. I know that God is looking for me, waving to me as I wave to him. That is the most profound inner source of peace. We do not need to prove ourselves in order to receive a blessing from God. All we need to do is that his face is turned toward us. When we are at peace with ourselves, we can begin to make peace with the world. So the blessings become longer and deeper from the external blessing of material goods to the interpersonal blessing of grace between ourselves and others to the most inward of them all, the peace of mind that comes when we feel that God sees us, hears us, holds us in his everlasting arms. One further detail of the priestly blessing is unique namely the blessing that the sages instituted to be said by the Kohanim over the mitzvah. Blessed are you who has made us holy with the holiness of Aaron and has commanded us to bless his people Israel with love. It is the last word, Behava, that is unusual. It appears in no other blessing over the performance of a commandment. It seems to make no sense. Ideally, we should fulfill all the commandments with love, but an absence of love does not invalidate any other command. Command, yeah. In any case, the blessing over the performance of a command in, is a way of showing that we are acting intentionally. There was an argument between the sages as to whether mitzvot in general require intention, kavana, or not. But whether they, they do or not, making a blessing beforehand shows that we do have the intention to fulfill the commandment. But intention is one thing, emotion is another. Surely, what matter is that the Kohanim recite a blessing and God will do the rest? What difference does it make whether they do so in love or not? The commenters rested with this question. Some say that the fact that the Kohanim are facing the people when they bless means that they are like the cherubim in the tabernacle, whose faces were turned to one another as a sign of love. Others change the, the word order. They say that the blessing really means who has made us holy with the holiness of Aaron and with love has commanded us to bless his people Israel. Love here refers to God's love for Israel, not that of the Kohanim. However, it seems to it seems that the explanation is this. The Torah explicitly says that through the Kohanim, say the words, it is God who sends the blessing. Let them put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. Normally, when we fulfill a mitzvah, we are doing something. But when the Kohanim bless the people, they are not doing anything in and of themselves. Instead, they are acting as channels through which God's blessing flows into the world and into our life. Only love does this. Love means that we are focused not on ourselves, but on another. Love is selfness. It's only selfness allows us to be a channel through which flows a force greater than ourselves, the love that moves the sun and the other stars, the love that brings new life into the world. To bless, we must love. And to bless, to be blessed is to know that we are loved by the one vaster than the universe who nonetheless turned his face towards us as a parent to a beloved child. To know that it is to find true spiritual peace. Can you feel that God cares for you and sees you? Do we need to seek God to strengthen this relationship with him? What is the connection between God turning his face towards us and our experience is peace. These are questions that we should ask ourselves this Shabbat and to always remember that God loves us and He wants to bring this love also to other people. So we sort of 
have a relationship. The love that he sends us, we, the Kohanim, yeah, not we, the Kohanim need to pass to Am Israel so they will show Hashem's love to the people. Shabbat Shalom.